the $1,000 account that is only invested in high yielding dividend stocks and ETFs has been doing extremely, extremely well. As you guys can see, we're up $5 on the day. On the week, we are up $26, a 2.5% gain on the week. And on the month, we are up almost 6%, which is about $60. We are now, I believe, are we near all-time highs? We are above our all-time highs and we continue to trend up. So this account has been doing extremely well. So what we're going to do in this video, we're going to go through and look at the stocks and ETFs that are in this account. We're going to address how each one is doing. And then we're going to go over exactly how much they paid in dividends this last month. So I hope you guys enjoyed this type of content. We're going to go ahead and jump straight into it. The first stock that I put in this account is ticker ARCC. This one was added because it did well in the last $1,000 dividend account challenge. And so I thought I'd put it in there because it's the largest BDC and it has been doing well. You can see it's up 12.2%, um, which is phenomenal. You know, remember I put $100 into each of these. So anything over 100 is the dividends reinvested. So even if the price has fallen, like we've seen with the yield max funds, the dividends being reinvested is actually counteracting that. And then we have JEPQ, a very popular JP Morgan fund at 12%, 12.75%. So nearly a 13% return in just seven months on this one, which I love. We can see there's a lot that are in the $12 range. SPYI, again, 12%. Now, one of the things I want to point out with SPYI is when this one's a monthly payer. And when I first started purchasing, when I first purchased this one, the dividends were like a dollar and then a dollar and one cent and then slowly going up so now that it's been reinvested every single time it's so cool to see that now the dividends a dollar and 12 cents so really it has just been super super fun watching this one grow even though it is growing just a little bit at a time because i only have a hundred dollars invested but still it has been super super fun and i do love seeing this one month chart because this thing has just been performing so well we have cony the top gainer in the account if you would have told me when i first started this series that coney would be the highest uh percent gainer at any point i would never have believed you so it is actually down slightly on the month not slightly it's down about 10 percent, and they paid out a nine dollar and 90 cent dividend so we can expect that the price does drop the dividends get reinvested and then it gets a little bit better from there next we have main street capital absolutely dominating i own a little over a thousand dollars of main in my own personal account and it does so well it is probably my favorite stock to buy um, so main street capital this is a bdc it's a little bit smaller a little bit higher risk than one like arcc but honestly, they do a lot of special dividends. The, the management has been doing phenomenally well. And so that one's up 25.6%, just under Coney. At one point, it was doing better than Coney, but those two are kind of chasing each other. And then we have 3M. This one is the most surprising. Well, one of the most surprising, because this was, I purchased two dividend kings for this account. I purchased 3M and I purchased LEG. Now, 3M immediately dropped like 10 plus percent and was trading even lower than that and now has been booming so 3m is back we are up here here's the kicker with 3m they did a spin-off so they partioned out some of their business to a different fund and that is this solv down here that's worth 13 dollars 58 so actually this means that 3m is the most grossing stock and etf this one has made the most money because we're up 18.8 percent here and 13.6% and here because this was not, I did not put any money into this. So Main Street is actually lower than 3M. So 3M has now outperformed everything else, which is insane, especially with this last little jump. We have Vici Properties that has run up. It was a little bit low. It was trading about, uh, what we had lost about 10, 11% on it. And now we're back positive. LEG, the biggest appointment disappointment in the account so far. I can't even believe this. I bought this because... I, I wanted to buy it in my normal account and I'm so thankful that I didn't because it's down 55 and a half percent in the past year. They slashed their dividend by like 90% and now it's just trading sideways. Absolutely destroyed the potential that we had with this account without LEG losing another $50. We would be at like a 13, 14% return on the account so far instead of just this, what 7%. So really kind of a bummer there, but 
that's how it goes with dividend investing. We have MPW that rocketed back up, now sitting at flat even, paying out a decent dividend still, which I love. And there's still a lot of rockiness with this one, as we'll see with the price over the year to date. It, it, it runs and then it drops from 560 back down to $4.00 back up to 530 back down to 4 480 so this one moves a lot TSLY a little bit of a disappointment but I'll tell you the main reasoning with this is because Tesla stock has been in a downtrend it has not been trading sideways it's been dropping and so it is really important to remember that the underlying stocks when it comes to these ETFs are very very important and then we have SOLV so what we are going to do now we are going to jump into the dividend tracking website and we're going to go over how much money we paid from we got paid from every single dividend that was paid out this month so let's get straight into it really quickly i don't know what is wrong with this i use dividend tracker and you guys have seen it if you've watched other videos it's not my favorite it's pretty frustrating and i don't know why it has a crazy drop of 20 dollars I had to re I always re put in all the information into this. I update it every time they have SPYI being down a hundred percent, which I don't understand at all. It doesn't make any sense. And so anyways, that's why it's messing that up. But what we really want anyway, we always look at the diversification and it shows that we are pretty well diversified financial services, BDCs, MISC is like the randoms. We have real estate with all of our REITs, of course, MPW, and so industrials, which I think I, this is 3M, I believe. Consumer cyclical, which would be Leggett and Platt because it's 51. And then healthcare. So a very, very uh, SOLV is the healthcare portion. A very, very interesting, interesting uh, diversification that we can see. And so now we'll see our payout, weekly payout summary for July. So we had JEPQ payout in the first week and it paid. 89 cents, which we've seen that's pretty consistent. And Vici paid $1.33. No complaints there. Then the 8th to the 14th, we got our yield max funds, of course. Coney paying out $10.71. Wow, even more than I thought. And Tesla with a massive payout of $5.90. They've been ranging in like the $3 to $4. So that is amazing. MPW with $3.10. Love it. I love that. LEG, 20 cents. And this is a quarterly payer. So this should be, I mean, it should be at least $2. And at $2 paid out, it would still be a pretty low yield. Then we have Main Street Capital. So let's get this. Leggett and Platt paid out $0.20 cents for the quarter. Main Street Capital paid out $0.60 cents for the month. And I invested $100 into each of them. That's how distinct and awful the drop-off for Leg has been. I want to sell it. I can't stand it. And then we have SPYI with $1.14. We continue to get higher and higher dividends from SPYI. I own this one and QQQI in my actual account, my Roth IRA. And it's just been doing super, super well. I'm super pumped with both these funds. And they have a new one, which I'll be purchasing soon. So if you guys are interested in those videos, I will link them down below and at the end of the video. But before we do that, we can see our year-to-date income is $171 which is phenomenal. If it was just this and we didn't have the price depreciation like we've seen, that would be better. But we are still positive a little over $70, which I'm I'm very happy for. A 7% return in seven months. A percent a month is not bad at all. Our monthly average dividend is $21.63. Our July income was $23.68 and then our annual income is roughly $259.55. What I really like this this month compared to June, it will probably be a little bit less. Let's see. Yeah, July. Well, nope, July did pretty well. July did pretty well for sure. It really depends on, on what stocks you have and when they're paying out their dividends, especially if it's quarterly. Um, they pay out sometimes on funky schedules, but I love seeing the consistent monthly, monthly payers that fill this account with a ton of dividends. So if you guys like this type of content, please consider subscribing. Check out the other videos in the series to see how the account's been doing and stay tuned to see the one year wrap up once we do finish out 2024. I appreciate you guys for being here. Don't forget to like the video and I'll see you in the next one.